Hello everyone, welcome back. So this time we're gonna be talking about um, an example problem from chapter five. Now this example problem is kind of interesting because it actually connects a whole lot of what we've learned so far, going all the way back to chapter three and using some instances from chapter four. So carbon diffuses in iron via an interstitial mechanism. Now that is something important there. We learned about that in chapter four. Interstitial means that iron is much, much bigger than carbon. And so carbon won't take the place of an iron atom. It'll instead find little gaps to live in inside of iron. Now this is face-centered cubic iron. And it moves from one octahedral site to an adjacent one. Okay, adjacent is an important word here. Now in section 4.3 of your textbook, there are two general sets of point coordinates for this site. And they're 0, 1, half, 1, and one half, one half, one half. As a note, when it says these are general sets of points, it just means that these are the only two non-repeating ones. Because face and cubic are, you know, symmetric in all directions. These are the only two that would be unique, as in they would be different from one another. And it says to specify the family of crystallographic directions in which the diffusion of carbon and FCC iron takes place. It's always moving to an adjacent site. Okay. So let's look at this. Now I'm going to draw the top plane of my atoms. So you know I have my face inner cubic cell looks something like this. I'm going to draw that plane first. Because I'm looking at it, 0, 1 half 1 would be, well here's my back axis. That is the y, that's the x, and that's the z. And so if I go 0 in the x, half in the y, and then 1 up, I will end up on that top plane. If I do half, 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 I'm actually in the direct center of my cube. So we'll get to that one next, but first let's draw the top plane. So here is my top plane, and my interstitial site is right here. If I'm looking at it, this would be directly above my origin right there. Now the nearest neighbor site is either going to be to go this direction or this direction. Um, and for a family of planes, I can choose either one. So I want to choose that it's going to go over here. And if I were to do that, well, I've moved one half in the X, one in the Y, and then come up to the top. So that would be one half, one, one. And this is still zero, one half, one. Okay, so that's one possible path I could have taken. The second one is the one that's in the direct center. And so if I look at that one, what I'm going to get is, okay, I'm drawing it for the direct center. For the direct center atom, if I'm looking at it, it's a little bit different. I only see four atoms, and these are the center atoms for each of the four faces. So I'm looking at it from above, kind of like drawing this plane right here, and I'm looking at this one. Now my interstitial site's right here in the center. It can move either this direction, it can move in any of these directions, honestly. My other one could too, it's just, this will make the most sense. Now, with that in mind, I'm going to choose just arbitrarily this one right here. And so, okay, so my origin is still over here. I just moved a half a unit in the Z direction. So I'm gonna go one in the X, zero in the Y, and this is halfway up, so half in the Z, because I'm right here and that's a half unit up. Okay, so I've got two directions here, and let's work them out. So I'll do this one first. So I started at one, zero, one half, one, and I went, make sure I do everything correctly, to one half, one, one. Okay, everything good there? I think so. Just everything? I don't think I did. Okay. One half, one, one. And so for a direction, it's always final minus initial. And so I do that, it's one half here, negative one half here, and then zero. Now I can't leave it that way. You're not allowed to have um, fractions when it comes to directions. And so I would have to make this a whole number by multiplying everything by two. Okay, so that would be my direction in this case. And 
need to make sure I don't forget to put the brackets around it. Square brackets for a direction. Now let's try this one over here. So my initial is one half, one half, one half. My final is one, zero, one half. I subtract them. Now I'll get one half, negative one half, zero. Let's see, everything looks good here, making sure I did it all right. Yes. And having done that, I will get a direction of one, negative one, zero. But remember, I could have gone here or here or here. So either my x or my y direction could have been one. So I could have been negative. I could have either had both be negative, only one be negative, or both be positive, all depending on which direction I went. So if I had gone here, both would have been negative. If I had gone here, both would have been positive. If I had gone here, then I would have had the reverse of which I had before. So when I have this, the family of planes, which is shown with these angled brackets, is going to be 1, 1, 0. And the reason it's a family of planes, the reason I don't show any negatives, is because for a family of planes, it's assumed that if I have these two right here, that they can also be negative. I have any combination thereof. So this is connected to you know, 1, 1, 0, negative 1, 1, 0, 1, negative 1, 0, and finally negative 1, negative 1, 0. All of those are part of that same family of planes. Okay, so with this, I hope this helps you see what's going on here, what it's asking for. Um, and also see how we're taking things from chapters 3 and 4 and beginning to apply them in chapter 5. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.